Y'all should girl Ducky back with another video and today well for the next three videos you're going to see um this intro because I'm not going to do it three different times because I'm going to be saying the same thing for each intro so I'm just going to do it one time and put this intro in front of each of the videos so I did an event for my university called kinks and crows and I was responsible for creating the content for the event explaining natural hair care so I thought it was great content that I created and felt that it would be important and good to use on this channel. So I am going to upload these videos. The first video is um, washing your hair, how to properly wash your hair and like some tips and tricks. And then the second video is your wash and go. I know I already have a mastering a wash and go like two part video, but this video is a little bit different because I am using different products as well as I am sort of explaining it differently than than I did in the wash and go video series and the last video is like tips and tricks and some of my favorite products it's not gonna be like all of my favorite products and it's not gonna be all of the tips and tricks that I use but it is gonna be some stuff that I felt has helped me progress in my hair journey so like I said I'm not going to make this intro three different times you're gonna see this intro in front of every single video okay but the title is gonna be different and the thumbnail is gonna be different so you're gonna know like okay this is a different video in the videos I'm talking about different things that are that came in the curl kits for the students so what I'm discussing you may not necessarily have at home because I'm gonna be like yeah you have this in your curl kit maybe I'll edit that out but if I don't edit that out um, just know that I'm speaking to the students at my university and um, you guys can feel free to find this stuff at Walmart Sally's um, your local beauty supply store because it's not like this stuff is exclusive everybody can find it you know what I mean so the stuff that I am using you can find it's just that like when I'm addressing the students you'll be able to tell because I'm like yeah you have this in your crooked blah 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 so if you would like to see this video um whether it be the wash and go the wash day or the uh tips and tricks stay tuned because I'm about to roll the clips. we talked about how to complete a wash day that is going to be most effective for your natural hair so in this video we're going to be discussing how to do a wash and go now this is my go-to style for any time that I'm doing my hair a wash and go because it just lasts the longest it lasts like seven days you can do so much with wash and goes I'm going to be walking you through a wash and go in this video so let's get right into it now the products that you guys have in your curl kits are the Garnier Fertis Leave-In and Styling Conditioner, and you have the Eco Styler Gel. In the videos, you'll see that I'm using this. Uh, this is the same thing, it's just in a bigger bottle. As you guys can see, I have thick and curly hair, and this small serving size cup, gone like that. So I had to use the bigger containers because I have more hair. So I'm using the same things that are in your curl kits, the Garnier Fertis Sleek and Shine Intense Smoothing Leave-In Conditioning Cream, and the Eco Styler Gel, the olive oil one. When I begin styling my hair, I always start by keeping my hair in the sections that they were in when I put my leave-in conditioner in my hair. And as you guys can see in the videos, I did complete the back portion because you guys can't see me styling my hair in the back with the camera in the front. But I am gonna show you guys how I style the front of my hair. And I do part my hair, I do a side part, so I part it first because the way that you style your hair is how it's gonna dry. So I did go ahead and part my hair using the peach wood comb that came from the company Grizzle Teddy. It was doing a giveaway today, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And I did put some oil on it because this is wood and I didn't want the, the wood pieces to get into my hair. I wanted the comb to glide through my hair as easy as possible. So I did put a mixture of Jamaican black castor oil and coconut oil in this bottle on this comb. This is in your kits, so get excited for that because we have the same combs now. We're comb friends, yes. So this spray bottle is small, but it does the job. I did use this during my wash and go so you guys can see that you are capable of using this small spray bottle to complete your wash and go. You might have to fill it up once or twice 
but it does get the job done. Normally I do use this 360 spray bottle and I fill this up with water and aloe vera juice. And this is just regular sink water. You wanna start by spraying your hair and you wanna get it as wet as possible. How your hair looks wet is how your hair is gonna look dry. So if your hair looks a mess wet, it's gonna look a mess dry. I'm just, okay, I'm gonna just be completely honest. I'm just be completely transparent. If your hair looks frizzy wet, it's going to look frizzy dry. You know what I mean? If it looks defined wet, it's gonna look defined dry. If it looks popping wet, you get what you get where I'm going with this? Okay, great. So you wanna make sure your hair is as wet as possible. You guys have this oil in your curl kits. Once I wet my hair, I put Jamaican black castor oil onto my scalp. Now I didn't use this, but I did use my Jamaican black castor oil and coconut oil mix. It's the same thing, it just has coconut oil in it. And my hair really likes Jamaican black castor oil and coconut oil. This is one of the things that really promoted hair growth in my hair journey. So I use this every time I style my hair. I just simply put it on my scalp and massage it through. That's one of the things that helps keep my scalp healthy, keeps dandruff away. You guys can simply use this as the same thing. You just pour it on your fingers and massage it in. Or you can even just, I mean the, the hole is pretty big. So I would recommend like, you know but maybe just like quickly and rub it in. It's the same thing, you'll get the same results. So after I treat my scalp with the oil, I go ahead and start styling my hair with the Garnier Fructis. I use a decent amount of this and I work it through, raking it through my hair, making sure all of my strands are evenly coated with the product and I just continue to work it through until I feel like my hair has absorbed it as much as possible. And then I go in with the Eco Styler Gel. So I went ahead and applied my gel. Now when you apply your gel, you wanna apply it the same way that you apply your deep conditioner and your leave-in. You wanna apply it to your root, not to your scalp, but to your root. And you wanna make sure you work it all the way through. When you straighten your hair, you don't leave your roots out. Why? Because they would look frizzy. So when you're doing a wash and go, you don't leave your roots out. Why? Because it'll look frizzy. Y'all see these roots? Frizz where? Exactly. So you wanna make sure that you get your roots and you're gonna repeat this process all throughout your hair. Now there are four ways of styling curls when you are doing a wash and go. The first way is a raking method where you simply just rake the product through. You can see I'm doing when I'm first distributing the product. You just rake the product through and then you leave it alone. The second way is the praying hands method. So you, when you're taking a section, you literally just like take the section through your hands like this as if you're praying. The third way, which is my favorite way, is the shingling method where you smooth out each individual curl to make sure that it's defined and the product is evenly distributed. That's my favorite way. You reduce single strand knots with this method. You reduce frizz with this method you maximize curl definition and you maximize moisture retention. So the fourth method of styling curly hair when you're doing a wash and go is using the Demon styling tool. Now there are many Demon brushes. This is the one that you use to style your hair and you can tell because the bristles are very hard. They almost don't move. And you basically just brush your hair and as you're brushing you twirl the brush as if it's like a curling iron and then you just let it go. Like I said, I do the shingling method as referenced in the videos. And then once you have completed the section, you drop it and you go to the next section. You do that all over your head and then you let your hair set. And then you can feel free to do your edges. I do my edges because, honey, what's the style without? So yes, feel free to do your edges. When I do my edges, I apply oil to my edges just a little bit so that you don't see a white buildup or like that cakey, flaky situation that goes on when um, some of us curly girls do our edges or some of us black and brown girls do our edges in general. So once your hair is completely styled, you've added all of your products, all of your oils, and you have styled it to your liking, I sit under the dryer for about 30 to 45 minutes. You can let your hair air dry, you can blow dry, you can diffuse it however you want your hair to dry. I sit under the dryer for a few reasons. One, because my hair is too thick to let it air dry. It would take at least two days, literally. And two, because the hooded dryer really sets my curls into place before I start messing with them and stretching them and picking and fluffing them. So I like the hooded dryer for those reasons. But you can also use a diffuser and get the same results. You'll, you may have a little bit more frizz with a diffuser. You can also use a blow dryer. You may not get as structured curls. Like I said, you may have a little bit more frizz with a blow dryer or a diffuser. And then after I come from under the dryer, I began the stretching and banding method of my hair. Now I stretch and band my hair for a few reasons. One, because it prevents single strand knots throughout the wash and go week. And for length retention, because naturally my hair, it'll shrink to, you know, like, like a mushroom. 
so I do like to stretch my hair to give me a little bit of length and a little bit of volume um, in my wash and goes. I begin by sectioning my hair gently. I do break the gel cast, which is basically the cast that the gel has put on your hair once your hair um, dries. So you can simply just break your gel cast like this. I do break my gel cast as I'm banding, so I don't necessarily have to break my gel cast before I start stretching and banding my hair. But what I do is I section my hair and I leave the top part of my hair and the perimeter of my hair. As you can see in the clip, because those are the parts of my hair that people will see and we don't want people to see stretched curls on the top of our hair. We want people to see defined curls. We want the top to be defined and the perimeter to be defined. But I do section the rest of my hair and I go ahead and stretch my hair using the blow dryer on high airflow, medium heat. And I simply just take the blow dryer and put it directly on my roots. And when I'm stretching my hair, I I take my hair and I stretch it out and I don't stretch to my ends. I stretch just about an inch before my ends so that I'm not disturbing the curl pattern at the bottom because you do see the curls on the bottom but you don't see the curls underneath because the top is covering it. And I go in with the blow dryer with the direction attachment piece that controls the airflow so that it's directly on my roots and on the the hair shaft of my hair which is the parts that are in between the roots and the ends of your hair. And I do high airflow warm heat and then I do that for about 30 seconds and then I do a, like a 15 second shot of cool air. Then I take some silk or satin scrunchies and I just begin to band my hair from the root and then like I said I leave the ends of my hair out because I don't want to disturb that curl pattern. And then I leave the bands in. I do that to all the sections of my hair and then I leave the bands in for about anywhere between 15 minutes to overnight. That is how I stretch and band my hair and then once your hair is set in its stretch state you're going to want to take this is in your curl kit, you guys. You're gonna to wanna to take your peach wood wide tooth comb. Now this is, <laughs> this is a beard comb, but you can use it as a pick. As you can see, the space between each tooth is just about as wide as the space between a pick. So as you can see, I can literally line these up and the space is just about the same. Let me show you guys. Difference is that it's wood. I did apply oil to it before I used it. I did go ahead and pick with this peach wood comb that is in your curl kits, so you'll be able to use that. But I also did go ahead and pick with my plastic comb because it was definitely lifting my roots and allowing me to be able to pick the uh, shaft of my hair. But this was helping me get volume. And I like to use plastic picks because they help with volume. Now you do get more frizz with plastic picks, but you do get more volume with plastic picks. With metal picks. You get less frizz, but you get less volume. And I don't really mind frizz because I like big hair. Like I like my hair to be like, whoa. You just wanna pick your hair and fluff your hair to your liking until you feel like, okay, she's popping, she's a baddie, she's a 10. Or he, he's popping, he's a baddie, he's a 10. Do guys say baddie? I don't even know. Until you feel like you've met your expectations with how you want your hair to look, you can pick until then. You can just get in the car, put your mask on and go. You know what I mean? So that's it for the styling portion and I will see you guys in our next video.